All right, everybody. So it's a new day, and uh, yesterday I posted a video of my pulse motor. Well, I actually figured out I calculated it wrong, and actually uh, I will show you all the results today. It's actually a lot, a lot faster. Um, I'm going to show you everything with the double pulse motor today and how it works. I show you with the scope. You can actually see the signals. And I can tell you how it runs. So we're going to do that right now. So ignore yesterday's video. I deleted it. It was all wrong anyway. I was too excited. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you exactly what I got. This is my fan motor controller board. All right. It runs a coil that has two windings on it. This particular winding, there's one winding here. It's the same one there, and one winding here. It's the same one there. These are offset by 10 degrees. They really should be offset by 15. These are 30 degrees all the way around here offset. So these are 30 degrees offset, and this actually needs to be 15 to make this particular motor Starship winding work the best. And I'll be doing that with Star Chellis coils. All right. So this fan motor runs off of a Hall sensor right here, and Instead of powering it directly from this board to my motor, what I've done is I externally pulled off um, the outputs and basically turned on a transistor. Okay, these are uh, let's see, it's, uh, tip 35. I'm sorry, tip 36C. Okay, and literally the LEDs are just for looks, um, so I can see what's going on, and that's it. So, here is what I got the settings on. Right there is the time the division. US, that's microseconds. If I pull down the drop down menu, you can see up here higher is nanoseconds. Here's 200 nanoseconds. I'm selecting 400 microseconds. Okay? milliseconds is even down here. Here's 200 milliseconds. So you can see that the division is set for 200 nanoseconds. That is the distance between these two dots. So from here to here, this time period is 200 microseconds. Now, today I found out that I can put a, a uh, frequency and also the period. The period is basically from a peak to a peak. Okay. So what I'm going to do is show you all of those things right now. And this motor is unbelievably fast. And uh, it does melt plastic. For some of you uh, thought if it was going that fast it would melt plastic. It does melt plastic. So let me turn this light off. And I can show you what I got set up first. Basically I got a quarter inch neosphere. Nothing there. Nothing too terribly hard to figure out. And this hall sensor. Okay, now you can see that that's spinning. When I get this in the right spot, and it will go faster or slower. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this real quick. You see how fast it got going already. Okay, so here's how the double pulse motor works. Um, I tried to explain this a while back, and uh, I'm just going to do it again real quick. Basically, you have to have two coils, and one is going to be your north coil, and one is going to be your south coil, both facing the same direction. So they're opposite polarities on magnetism. Both north, or one's north and one's south facing this direction, and the same thing in the other direction. What happens is this magnet turns halfway around, and it gets a pulse from a south side, then it turns halfway around and gets a pulse from a north side. So instead of doing one revolution, it gets a pulse. It actually pulses twice during one revolution. Now on my screen, I have this set up. Channel A, or 1, is one output, and channel 2 is the other output. Okay, so don't get that confused. This is one revolution from whatever time period I hear. That's one revolution of this neosphere. These two combined is what makes up one revolution. I'll show you what I mean. Alright, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna actually stick a um, I'm gonna stick a little bit bigger Neo here just to explain this to you. So we'll go ahead and get it spinning. Ok. 
Okay. So I'm not gonna change. I'm not gonna change anything. Here's what happens. This one triggers right here and fires halfway through. Okay. Then the second pulse triggers here halfway through. So this right here is your one revolution. This is the north or south, and this is the north or south. So half and half. It's only half duty cycle. That's the way this works. So right now you can see I'm running at uh, 1.5 kilohertz. Okay. And you can see the, the period, which is the length, the total length. I'm running at uh, 728 microseconds. Not nano, micro. All right, so let's go ahead and shut this off. Take the Neo out, and we'll get the quarter inch in there and let her rip. All right, so this is my quarter inch Neo sphere, and uh, I can get it going faster, but I just want to show you this, and then I'll get it to max speed. All right, that's pretty fast. Now, for those of you that are confused, and myself as well, there is my period. So I'm at 200, 208 microseconds, okay? That is from this point to this point, which is one revolution. My frequency is 4.81 kilohertz. That's the frequency. So now there's no doubt that this is the frequency and that you can calculate it by the frequency a lot easier than you can time. All right, so I'm gonna get this going fast as I can and uh, show you how fast this runs and it is unbelievable okay guys I gotta go I gotta hold it it's gonna be hard to film but uh, there you go I'm actually faster than I thought that's 184 micro seconds that's from peak to peak my frequency 5.21 kilohertz all right and that's what that's what my peaks look like you can see every other every other one running now I'm gonna let this go and turn on the light so we can see it you can see it spinning now for those of you who said that it melts the plastic it melts plastic it does melt the plastic um, it has been melting the plastic you can see if I can get a focus, you can see here how the side of this tube is melted. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the power. You can see how long it's been. And it's, it's, it doesn't have a lot of friction because it's spinning on the bottom. So it's not spinning around and around this direction. It's spinning this direction, which makes it barely have any friction. So it's totally plausible to go this fast without just sucking right and melting right through this plastic. There, it finally quit. Let's do some calculating. Um, it is over 300,000 RPM. Calculate it yourself. You see the numbers. You saw what I got it set on. There's no denying it. It's crazy. Okay, everybody. So here's your calculations. This is unbelievably fast. Check it out. Um, so we had 500, well, 5,021 kilohertz, which is 5,021 hertz. Now, one hertz is equal to, um, let's see, 60 hertz is equal to one second. So basically, I had to take this number and, and uh, multiply it, all right, by 60. And that would give me the RPM, revolutions per minute. That's right. This is 301260, 301260 RPM. Now let's go ahead and calculate it with the uh, duty cycle, just to make it clear. All right, guys, so the, to the best of my ability, here's what I come up with on calculating it by the... Uh, microseconds 
if I take point zero zero zero, which is my problem yesterday, three zeros, one eight four microseconds, that's what it was. And what we're going to do is times that by five thousand four hundred and thirty four, and that's going to give us almost one. That's one second. Okay. So what we're going to do is take five thousand four hundred and thirty four times 60, that's how many seconds we want. And that gives us our RPM. That's 326,040 RPM. So, either way I calculate it, you can recalculate it, but the, the frequency was the best way to do it. And, uh, that's it. Alright, uh, I'm out. There you go. Fastest pulse motor I've ever seen. At least in person. So, uh, Calculate it yourself. Again, if you think it's wrong, let me know, but uh, all the results are in the video. Go back and watch. Okay? See ya.